And here comes Kofi Sarkoni. Huge space on the right side. Sarkoni whips it back. What a goal! Warren Craval has side footed it in after an electric run by Kofi Sarkoni. A spectacular goal gave the Dynamo a road point in Columbus. Highlights from a showdown with the crew coming up. I'll be on that plane for South Africa. And I, I don't think it's uh, cocky arrogance. I think it's more of, you know, confidence in myself and, and self-belief. Ahead of his highly anticipated return to international play, Stuart Holden was back in the Bayou City. We catch up with the former Dynamo star. And the Dynamo will get another shot at their in-state rivals as an Open Cup date with FC Dallas looms next week. We'll preview the Lone Star Clash and much, much more starting now, right here on Dynamo Weekly. Hey there, folks. Welcome into another episode of Dynamo Weekly. Sebastian Salazar here at BBVA Compass Stadium. Thank you so much for joining us. And isn't it interesting how much things can change in just a month? The narrative at the beginning of the season was that the Houston Dynamo couldn't win away from the Bayou City. Well, their last four games away from Houston, they've taken eight points. But to keep that trend going, they'd have to get a result in a place, Columbus, where they hadn't won since 2007. Let's check out the highlights from Saturday's clash with the crew. Dynamo facing a crew side featuring Dominic Oduro, the ex-Dynamo forward with six goals already on the season. Second minute, crew pushing forward. Federico Higuain, one of many through balls. This one to Jairo Arrieta, racing behind the Dynamo defense, but look at Eric Bruner. That closing speed, huge tackle to break up the play and keep the crew scoreless. Fifth minute, the Dynamo with a chance. Will Bruin with the cross, Jason Johnson with a good first touch and a nice volley for the shot. Goes just high, 17th minute. Oduro finds some space. His lefty blast just over the top of Tally Hall's net. Still 0-0. That would last until the 31st minute. Dynamo get a free kick here. You gotta think Robert Varzia is very concerned here because during your best times, you gotta produce goals. They've had chances here. They have not hit the scoreboard. And here comes Kofi Sarkoni. Huge space on the right side. Sarkoni whips it back. What a goal! Warren Craval has side footed it in after an electric run by Kofi Sarkoni. Kofi Sarkoni with a brilliant run, breaking past crew defenders, picks out Warren Craval. Caval, no problem. Goal time, 1-0. Very much against the run of play, the Dynamo take the lead. In the 38th minute, Higuain and Arrieta back at it. Beautiful long ball from the Argentine. It falls to the Costa Rican. Great shot on goal, but look at Tally Hall. A phenomenal reaction, swats it away. Still 1-0. The Dynamo clinging to that lead. 41st minute, more Tally Hall. He denies Higuain from distance, and then on the rebound, Arietta should have had a goal, but doesn't. Tally Hall, back-to-back -back stops. We go to the half, 1-0 Dynamo. 51st minute now, Houston chance to double their lead. Get some insurance, off the corner kick, Will Bruin with a shot at it. Warren Craval with a shot at it. But Andy Grunebaum, the crew goalkeeper, making three straight huge saves at point-blank range to keep his team in it. In the 68th minute, Columbus would finally get their just reward for pressing all night. Penalty kick called, foul on Andrew Driver. Higuain steps up, and no doubt about it, he slams it home past Tally Hall. We're all tied up at one. 74th minute, Higuain having himself a great game. Beautiful shot here, bends it around, off the post, and Justin Miram somehow, some way, doesn't put that in the net. He knocks it over, and the Dynamo dodge a bullet. In the 90th minute, another bullet dodge. Aaron Schoenfeld with the cross. Arietta was right there to tap it in, but Tally Hall, using all six foot four of that frame, tips it away. And the final in this one from Crew Stadium, 1-1.
Dom, kind of a Murphy's Law game tonight. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong from injuries to the weather. You got to feel good about a point. Point's not bad. I didn't know what Murphy's Law was until you just said that. So uh, I'll agree with you. We got some problems tonight, but the guys stuck together and fought hard. Hey, talk to me about Anthony Arena coming in off the bench in a jam. Young player really stepping up. Yeah, I mean, we didn't expect to see him playing, but uh, the way things are going, he got some minutes. I thought he battled hard tonight, did some good things for us. And uh, sometimes your number's called, and his was, and he did all right. I just tried to connect my first couple passes because, I mean, especially on a debut, like, pretty nervous going into the game, so, I mean, but I was confident in what I could do, so to connect the first passes and those first couple tackles definitely helped my confidence to be the beginning. Hectic at the end of the game. I know you guys always look for three, but you'll take one in this situation. Yeah, they're they're, they're pushing on, pressing on there quite a bit at the end, so we're, we're fortunate, but I think we could have had one as, as well. We could have come away with the win, but a uh, point on the road is good, so we'll take it. I know at the half you mentioned the quality of your goal uh, in the first 45. Walk me through that from what you saw, because it did look nice. It's our goal. I mean, it was good over, overlapping play by, uh, by Kofi to get you gamble going forward. A great run, great cross, and you know, warm with that late run from midfield. It was uh, it was a real good goal for us. Well, another big storyline, unfortunately, for the Dynamo from Saturday: injuries. Adam Moffitt came off with a knee issue. Eric Bruner with a head injury, and finally Giles Barnes late in the game hurt his ankle. So we'll keep an eye on those injuries as they develop. Good thing for the Dynamo, they've got some time. Next MLS match, not till June 19th, against. The Montreal Impact, who happen to be atop the Eastern Conference with Saturday's result. The Dynamo get a little bit closer, 22 points now, tied for third in the East. All right, time for our first break here on Dynamo Weekly. When we return, Glenn Davis joins me here on the set at BBVA Compass Stadium, and we will break down the match in Columbus. Don't go anywhere. Dynamo Weekly continues in just a moment. Yet to get underneath it. And a game effort, and that ball is going to sport towards the post. Let's give all credit to Hall for the diving save. Two touches, giving it up. One, two touches, giving it up. One, two touches, taking a crack at goal. He scored the other night in the open cup. Defending now, Columbus. Good shot. One, oh, what a counter attack and a lead to the visitors from Houston. Back here on Dynamo Weekly, Sebastian Salazar, Glenn Davis here to recap the match up in Columbus, a 1-1 draw. And Glenn, let's start with the starting 11 for the Dynamo. No Brad Davis, no Boniek Garcia, and it certainly seemed to hurt Houston in midfield. Yeah, I think it hurt the Dynamo quite a bit in midfield. I think when you lose in Major League Soccer, the quality of a Brad Davis and an Oscar Boniek Garcia, you got to concede the fact that you may not have as much of the ball on the night. But the Dynamo had to adjust with the number of people missing. Uh, this was a bit problematic for them. Then again, Columbus also was missing a number of players. Let's talk about the first kind of major piece of the puzzle that fell apart for the Dynamo, and that's Eric Bruner coming out with a head injury. In steps Anthony Arena. You cannot, I don't think, say enough positive things about his MLS debut. His debut was wonderful. I think Anthony Arena took a real step up. I've been down to Dynamo practice, and I saw a very young player trying to fit into the professional game, and, and at times it was frustrating for him. But in this game, he comes off the bench. I think we have to go back to Wednesday night and remind people of the fact that he played 90 minutes in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. So if you don't think the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup is important, it's certainly was for Anthony Arena. He let the game come to him. I thought he was very, very composed, Sebastian, very mature in the way he played the game, and he kept it simple. I think it's fair to say that the Dynamo goal came very much against the run of play in the 31st minute, and that takes us to our inside look. Kofi Sarkodie continuing to expand his game, and the Dynamo get width and penetration and score a spectacular goal on the road. The Dynamo 4-4-2 alignment requires that outside backs bring width and join into the attack and penetrate. This is essential in the modern game. So here is the Dynamo posture as a team prior to the goal. Three players to note at this moment. First, Kofi Sarkodie, the Dynamo right back who is on the ball. Second is Dynamo wide man Jason Johnson. And third is midfielder Warren Craval. All will play significant roles in this spectacular Dynamo goal. As things progress, we note that essentially we have a two-on-two -two situation going on in a wide area between the Dynamo and the crew. As Johnson comes back to receive the pass from Sarkodie, 
Note the huge space that has been created behind Columbus left back Tyson Wall, who has been dragged higher up the field by Johnson. Johnson wisely plays back to Sarkoti, who with two touches beats both wide men, and this attack now is in full flight. All of a sudden, the Columbus team shape has been shattered, and six players are turned and running towards their own goal. Sarkoti drives into the vacated space and now has drawn out central defender Glauber, who has been pulled out of the middle. Look at this huge space, and guess who's going to get into it? Yes, that man Craval, who has clearly beaten a crew player into the penalty area. Sarkoti whips in the perfect delivery. It's got pace, and Craval knows that, so all he has to do is make good contact. He chooses a safe surface, the inside of his foot, to steer it in. It's a fantasy goal, and one that originates from a wide area, reminding us that modern outside backs must bring width to an attack and penetrate. All right, so that assist for Kofi, his fourth of the season, ties him for the team lead. He's always been able to get up the wings, but certainly starting to bring that delivery now. It's wonderful to see a young man take control of his career. Kofi Sarkodi is doing that. He knows the element of finding the proper delivery when he gets into the attack is vital. And listen, that's an area in Major League Soccer over the years that has been criticized. The delivery when the outside backs join in an attack and get into the final third. Kofi Sarkodi right now I think is in a truly confident place right now. He's stretching his game. He's pushing it to the limits. Another part of that Dynamo defense that was absolutely critical against the crew, Tally Hall. It's the second straight week we say the guy stands on his head and really saves Houston. Stands on his head, stands on everything. He's saving balls in all kinds of different ways. Look, you don't get this point without Tally Hall on the road. Let's face it. Um, scrambling back to uh, sweep one off the line. Uh, a double save on both Iguain and Arietta. Uh, the big man is in the zone right now. Uh, everything seems to be hitting him, and that's why they call Tally Hall the wall. That's right, and look forward to his performance, or at least the call-up. Uh, against Jamaica with the U.S. national team. That'll be very exciting for him and I think for Dynamo fans as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about the opponent because I think it's important in this game. you got to give the crew some credit. They were very good and I think it starts and probably ends with Federico Higuain. It certainly did. Certainly he's one of the key men in this game, but he's the fulcrum of this team. And look, they've tried to replicate the days of when they had Guillermo Barros Galota, the former Boca Junior star here and won an MLS Cup. He's got the free reign. He's orchestrating the attack. And guess what? The number 10 is not dead. The playmaker role is still alive. It's in Major League Soccer, it's with Iguain. His play in tight areas, the, the way he led his team, put his team on his back in the second half, incredibly impressive. And you know, the thing that says the most about Iguain's performance, you didn't really notice that Eddie Gavin wasn't there, which says a lot because he's so valuable to the crew. All right, time for a break here on Dynamo Weekly. When we return, we catch up with former Houston star Stuart Holden and see what the Dynamo are doing out in the community. All that and more next on Dynamo Weekly. Welcome back to Dynamo Weekly. You know, after a two and a half year absence from international soccer, former Dynamo star Stuart Holden finally made his return to the U.S. national team last week in a friendly against Belgium. Before that, he was here in town working out with famed trainer Danny Arnold over at Plex Performance. And we had a chance to catch up with Stuart to talk about his future with the U.S. national team and also a potential return to the Houston Dynamo. what the conversations have been like with Jorgen Klinsmann and what his plan is for you this summer. Yeah, we spoke uh, when I was on loan at Sheffield Wednesday a couple times and he was, he was happy with how I'd come back and how hard I'd worked over the last year and a half to, to get back on the field and um, you know he said that he'd seen enough of me to where he wanted to bring me in for the qualifiers and for the Gold Cup and uh, obviously no pressure on me and if I came in and pressed then you know I would see some game time in the qualifiers and if not it would be a great uh, way to prepare myself for, uh, for the Gold Cup in July. Let's see if they can do it. Susie do play back out and there he is. Oh yes, Josie Altidore ends the scoring drought and what a way to do it. Have you been able to kind of follow the U.S. team through the World Cup qualifiers? What's been your impression through the first three matches? Yeah, I, I watch every game. I tried not to as much when I was injured, but you still you find yourself turning on the channel and, and watching the team because you want to be a part of that team and you, you don't want to miss a beat in that sense. So, you know, I've been following it. I think that the team's gotten better as, as it's gone on. Uh, some good results for them so far. And I think we're in a pretty good position now with uh, two home games and an away game in Jamaica where if we pick up some good points, we, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be that one step closer to qualifying for the World Cup. I've heard some English soccer fans say that the championship is very similar to MLS. You've played in both leagues, you kind of have an understanding. Is that a fair comparison? 
Uh, I always find it hard to prepare, uh, compare the two leagues, but um, you know, from, from having played in the championship and MLS, it's they're both very physical leagues. Uh, a lot of good athletes, um, some very fast-paced uh, end-to-end stuff. So in that respect, I think uh, you know you can compare it, and you know, good players in both leagues that, that obviously are capable of, of playing in leagues higher, even you know, Premier League and uh, League League One in France, uh, you know, La Liga, all, all those types of leagues. I think that. Uh, you know, championship and MLS really prepare you for. Not that you're close to the end of your career, but a lot of times great players, when the, you know they're kind of getting ready to wrap up, want to come home and play for the team where it all started. Would you at some point consider a return to MLS in the Houston Dynamo? Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't really see myself playing for any other team in MLS other than the Dynamo. It's, this is home for me. You know, I'm in my off season now, and well, technically I've got a week of off season, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm back here training, working out at Plex, and you know, live just around the corner, and um, you know, I would always, I definitely welcome at some point in the future a, a return to the Dynamo. All right, here we are, 13 months from Brazil. Do you have goals, aspirations to be on that roster for the 2014 World Cup? Yeah, I was sat there during my rehab uh, a couple months ago and did an interview, and I think I ended it with saying that. I'll be on that plane for South Africa, and I, I don't think it's uh, cocky arrogance. I think it's more of, you know, confidence in myself and and self belief that you know after all I've been through, how I've worked through that that perseverance, that drive is really going to push me on and uh, you know get me back to the level that I was at before and, and push me on to, to higher ones where you know I can play a big part. Holden's return to international soccer, a brief one. He came on in the 81st minute, replacing Sasha Kleschen in a 4-2 loss to Belgium. Either way, great just to see Stewart back on the field. All right, let's get back to the Dynamo now. And as evidenced by the beautiful stadium that we're in, the partnership between BBVA Compass Bank and the Houston Dynamo has been extremely beneficial to both parties. I had a chance to see that relationship in action recently as the two great organizations teamed up for the Building a Better Houston initiative. Mary Irene Gonzalez knows downtown Houston well. The mother of nine turned great-grandmother has seen it all since moving into her East End home back in 1969. But even Gonzalez was taken aback when a trio of Houston Dynamo players flanked by an army of Dynamo and BBVA Compass employees volunteered to rebuild her home. I, I never comprehended that people would give so much of themselves to a perfect stranger and do it with their heart and willingly to, to give somebody a hand, so to speak. It. The makeover for Gonzalez's home included painting, plumbing repairs, and even a new roof, all part of the Building a Better Houston initiative, the latest collaborative effort in the brief but very successful relationship between BBVA Compass and the Dynamo. It all started with a loan to, to make the, to build the stadium. That was where we, we were able to hit it off. And then um, that really made, made it kind of a possible deal, the current stadium. And then after they came to us with the naming rights and uh, we jumped in the opportunity and it's been a great year. Um, fans are very passionate, uh, they love their team and they love the bank that's on the, on the team's stadium. Built in the 1940s, Miss Gonzalez home sits just a mile and a half from BBVA Compass Stadium, which speaks to an important tenet of the Dynamo's charitable philosophy, not just to do good works, but to do them in your own backyard. They've welcomed us with open arms. You know, the stadium is, is, is right down the street, so it's, it's only fair that we do the same. So, um, like I said, you know, it's something that we like to do, uh, something that we feel is, uh, is necessary. You know, we're starting here in our own neighborhood, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great place to start because there are a lot of places that need repair, I think, around here. And, uh, you know, last year uh, we did the same thing with another house and hopefully we'll continue to do this until, uh, you know, there are no more houses that need help. So more continued great work from the good folks over at BBVA Compass as well as Dynamo Charities. All right, coming up next here on Dynamo Weekly, we get back to the field and the upcoming showdown in the U.S. Open Cup up in Frisco against Dallas. Don't go anywhere. Glenn Davis joins us on set in just a moment right here on Dynamo Weekly.
Thanks for sticking with us here on Dynamo Weekly. Sebastian Salazar, Glenn Davis. No MLS match to preview this coming week, but there is some U.S. Open Cup action June 12th up in Frisco. Another shot at FC Dallas. Hey, guess what? The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup does mean something to us fans here in Houston. All of a sudden, you get your rival. There's a whole different look on this. The Dynamo get closer to a payoff of $250,000 if you win the trophy and if you win the cup. And, and I just think it's a wonderful thing that has happened here because a lot of people still, there's this conundrum around what the Lamar U U.S. Open Cup is to the Dynamo and what it means to them. Well, we saw the lineup that they used against FC Tucson. Now, granted, that was a fourth division, a PDL team. Do you expect a fuller, more first-team look against FC Dallas? I would think so, but look, there's a lot of injury. There's a lot of call-ups still, so other people are going to still get opportunity. These are wonderful games for coaches to assess their players in environments that are competitive, that are serious, and we can't ever forget the fact that teams are certainly going into these games looking to get experience for younger, less experienced type players. When we look back to the last matchup in U.S. Open Cup against FC Tucson, was there a guy that maybe stood out to you that you say, okay, that performance means he's going to play in the next round? Well, let's let's not uh, go any farther than Anthony Arena. Remember, Anthony Arena got that vital 90 minutes on a Wednesday before playing against Columbus in Columbus. I think that clearly was a great stepping stone. It eased his transition to, into his first ever Major League Soccer minutes. And of course, you got to mention an 18-year-old Brian Salazar uh, getting his feet wet in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Alex Dixon as well getting his first goal uh, with the Dino. That was a big moment for the youngster, the homegrown product. Let's talk a little bit about FC Dallas. 28 points, still first in the West, four points clear of RSL. They're still rolling, but they will have some guys missing. Blas Perez, most noticeably. Yeah, but look, they're licking their chops up in Dallas because they, they've been the whipping boy of the Houston Dynamo for many years. They're number one in the Western Conference. They're drawing more fans now. Uh, they are dying to see the Dynamo come up into this environment and dying to put one over on the Houston Dynamo. Uh, things are better in Dallas right now. There is no doubt about it. And it's a team that's stacked with overall athletic ability, quality players. Shellis Hyman's got it going right now. It's the 90th minute here on Dynamo Weekly. That means stoppage time in a moment for one last take. Glenn, what's yours? I want to take you to the nation's capital, the United States playing Germany in a 4-3 to three win. Celebration of 100 years of U.S. soccer. Who says we don't have history? The other thing, 52,000 fans. How many times have we seen the United States play in games here in the U.S. where their fans were in the minority? This was 52,000 pro-American fans. A huge statement. A huge statement here in the Bayou City as well as Mexico took on Nigeria over at Reliance Stadium, 62,000 in attendance. And for me, the takeaway was how great the game itself was. You usually don't get that in a friendly. Two teams that were willing to open up, play a little bit, and the superstar Chicharito grabs two goals. That made it an exciting night over at Reliance Stadium. All right, that'll do it for us here on Dynamo Weekly. For Glenn Davis, I'm Sebastian Salazar. Thanks for watching, and remember, CSN is your home for the Houston Dynamo.